if you look at what other people are doing these days, is they have realized that object orientation in your development environment is key. It could be said to be the next major step in terms of how people develop software. What we offer is a true and complete object-oriented development environment um, that has proven results. In October 1991, Next challenged the claims of its own software developers and customers by inviting two programmers to implement the same application on two different platforms. One programmer worked on a Spark Station 2GX using Sun's Open Windows and DevGuide development tools. The other on a Next Station Color using NextStep, our object-oriented development system. The application to be developed is designed to allow representatives of a hypothetical office products company to solve customer problems over the telephone. When a call comes in, the customer service representative, or CSR, enters the caller's ID number into the system, and the system responds with the corresponding name and address from the customer database. As the customer describes the problem, the CSR, using standard word processing functions, enters the problem in a trouble log, into which the system has already copied the customer's name and address. From a database of products, the CSR selects the product in question, which in turn leads to a list of associated problem solutions. The CSR retrieves and displays the appropriate solution from a solutions database, which contains product manual pages scanned and stored in industry standard TIFF format. The system also allows the CSR to print or fax the manual page, as well as to compose an accompanying cover letter with the name and address again copied from the customer database. Finally, the system must perform the usual housekeeping functions, like database maintenance, as well as allow the user access to all system resources, such as printers and modems, to which the operating system would normally grant access. Well, the relationship between the different parts of the project are fairly well defined. It's just, there, there's some cosmetic considerations in how you're going to put it on the screen, and how you're going to make it arrange, which, which I have quite a bit of control over, but the actual functionality and what information does have to appear and how the information relates to the other information is pretty well defined already. Actually, one of the benefits of both of these types of tools is that you can prototype things easily without a lot of pain. I'd say if we didn't have the kinds of tools that you have in the next environment to do this kind of project, just, the, just this prototyping project would probably take two, three weeks, maybe more for me whereas with these tools will take me two days. I agree with the other Tom. It should take about a couple, couple work days. Every application on a Next computer is built using Interface Builder. Interface Builder is not just a simple user interface prototyper. It is an application builder. I've already created the basic framework for the application, and now I'm going to, to lay out the, the contact information window. Over here we have what, what we call a palette, and all that is is a collection of different objects which you can just drop into your application. In this case, I'm dropping in what we call a matrix of fields. You have to give each of these, of course, the appropriate name. The next thing we have to do is we have to create the three buttons we need for the contact information panel. So to do that, we can just move over to the palette and drag a button over. I also don't like the spacing of these buttons, so I'll stretch them out just a little bit. In the same way, the next programmer creates the customer log window by dragging a window object from Interface Builder's palette.
Then he drags and drops a text object into the log window. With this one action, he has included in his program all the text handling capabilities of a sophisticated word processor, from multiple fonts and rich text to scrolling and spell checking. Using DevGuide, the Sun programmer creates his user interface. Without some of Next Step's features, like matrix fields and graphical connections, the process is a little more tedious, though still one of personal preference. The similarity in both design and implementation time of the two interfaces suggests the real test of these tools will come over the next few hours when the programmers take their designs from the prototype stage to full-blown production systems. You cannot build full-blown applications in DevGuide. Um, it is not object-oriented in any sense. It is simply a screen painter. The person who's not intimately um, aware of what's going on looks at the products, and they look the same because they, they both have the ability to paint the screen. But that's where DevGuide stops, and that's where Interface Builder begins. Interface Builder allows you to connect objects, to send messages from one object to another. DevGuide doesn't even know what an object is. Well, right now I'm getting ready to, to create a way to make the buttons function and the, and the customer information to come up. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a new object. What I intend to do is I intend to subclass object itself because the controller object really doesn't need any of the functionality of these more sophisticated objects. Then I'm going to name the object controller. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my buttons to the object. Control click on a button and you come down and and make a connection now. Of course, the send button will get connected to the send function. The log button will get connected to the log function. And the find button will get connected to the find function. What just took me two or three minutes to do would probably take me an hour or so to, to do manually. I've implemented all the features in the specification except for printing. So if a customer service representative got a call, they could bring up information on the customer. And while they were listening to the customer's complaint, they could also start writing down information about that complaint. OK, basically, uh, I've now uh, put in place, oh, I'd say about 80 or 90 percent of the code uh, at this point. So I'm going to put in customer number 1,000. And uh, lo and behold, we have this fellow named Iacocca. One of the things I might do is uh, bring up a log, and it's automatically filled in with the customer's name, address, and phone number. And the person taking the call would uh, basically type in a record of the call. In an attempt to diagnose the customer's problem, they could, br they could bring up the various diagnoses. The diagnoses are in the form of TIFF files. And the way we find TIFF files is in what we call an open panel. And the open panel is a very simple way of navigating through the file system to find the particular file you want to find. This is something which is part of the app kit. It's a very simple thing to implement in any application you write. And so also when I bring up this image, we can take a look at what at the manual page for the problem the customer was complaining about. And then in talking with the customer, they need to have an aid, uh, a tool which would let them uh, look up by product, in this case color copier, the different problems uh, that might occur with it, and then be able to access the appropriate pages of the manual or whatever service document uh, applies. So if I go here and select paper supply, then when I, s that's essentially where I am right now, is the next step is for the manual. That's essentially where I am right now, is the next step is to, uh, the panel comes up, but uh, I haven't filled in the blank yet to actually display the manual page and uh, the print, uh, the print pop-up uh, to also uh, let the uh, person using the system uh, print a hard copy of the manual. If you're going to write an application on the next, you're half done, okay? Because we've already written half of it for you. We've written almost all of the user interface code. The last thing I need to do is I need to add printing to the application. And to add printing, the first thing I need to do is simply pull another item over from my menu. Then I'm going to rename the item to 
print with an ellipses. And we're also going to use P as a quick key to do the printing. And the standard print action in the next step in the environment is print PS code. Then finally, I have to connect the print menu button to the first responder itself and make that connection to print PS code. And, the con and printing is set up now. What I've done for right now is uh, I haven't yet uh, coded the part to uh, actually read the uh, raster files. So what I'm showing here is a postscript of a typical uh, document manual page. Actually, you'd probably work in, you could work in everything but TIFF, as it turns out. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the print process works. The, you start it with the command P to bring up the print panel. The print panel, just like the open panel, is something which is intrinsic to the applicant. It gives you full control over the print process. In addition, it allows you to choose from various printers on the network for your printing. And you simply click on print to start the print process. Now that I've demonstrated the printing process functions properly, we're done coding this application and it can be used by the customer service representatives. Basically the work that remains is really in this, uh, in the problem search area, loading the, uh, loading the raster file. And I'd, rec I'd say maybe two to four hours. At this point, we threw the programmers an unexpected, but not unrealistic curve. Like a typical user, we asked them to add a feature not in the original spec. In this case, a button that would recall all the trouble logs for a particular customer. Using Next Step, the next programmer completed the task in about 20 minutes. Well, there was, were several steps I had to go through. The first was to add this open log button. Then I had to add a means of executing the open log function. So what I did is I added an action to controller. So I added the open log action to controller. The code I needed to add for that action took up well under a page of space. The Sun programmer also estimated a time of 20 minutes, but it took about 45 before he was ready to test his version. Anyway, we'll try running in here for the first time. Yeah, okay, came up. That's a good sign. One rarely gets these to work the first time, like that. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm now going to go into the debugger and see why it, uh, why it didn't run for us. In three days, the next programmer not only delivered a functioning production system, he also added extra user features, like icons on the buttons in the customer contact window, the ability to fax any document that could be printed, and an integrated email facility with text, graphics, and voice annotation capabilities. All for free, and all without writing a single line of code. Okay, so we've now come to the point where it uh, was having its problem earlier. The Sun implementation lacked many important features. It could not display or print the scanned manual pages nor did the trouble log recall button ever advance beyond the prototype stage. So anyway, what you have here is real-life software development on the fly. And while the next implementation allowed access to all the system type fonts, including their various styles and sizes, the Sun implementation only provided a few type fonts and styles that were pre-selected and hard-coded by the programmer. In fact, many of the features in the Sun implementation were hard-coded, including the products displayed in the problem diagnosis window. As a result, even when a new product, in this case a fax machine, was added to the Sun database, the color copier continued to be the only product available to the user. Ah, that's our problem.
And while the next implementation required only five pages of objective C code, broken up into three small modules, the Sun implementation, which never truly advanced beyond the prototype stage, required 16 pages of C code. And those 16 pages were organized into one long source file. And make sure that I indeed hook this pop-up, the new one, to the... I bet I didn't. Yes, that's the problem. I didn't hook it up. So I will do that. Although the programming example in this video was a simple one, the results were typical of those experienced by Next customers. In developing mission-critical applications, Next Step can eliminate the need for hundreds of thousands of lines of source code. Hundreds of thousands of lines that would otherwise have to be written, debugged, and maintained. If you'd like to discover how you can enjoy the same productivity improvements as companies like these, companies that are already developing their mission-critical applications on Next computers, register for one of the Next Step seminars held regularly around the country. Just call 1-800-TRY-NEXT, extension 216. If you use your custom application to make money, okay, which, for example, people on Wall Street do, the sooner you have it, the more money you're making. Um, and if it's going to take you an extra two years to develop that application, well, your competitors are making money off you.